ready to go. So, um, what we're going to be talking about now is in the last part of your homework, which is 87 through 95. We're going to get into uh, some sigma notation. So, obviously, again, Zoe, this is going back to a little bit of review, but I want to make sure that everybody at least understands what sigma represents and how we're going to apply it. So, I'm just going to go through a basic uh, problem right now. This recommends, this is the um, Greek symbol sigma, and sigma represents sum. No. So, right? Thank you. <laughs> so, you guys want to write this down. This means sum. All right. Then what we're what we're going to be adding is a sequence of numbers, and we're going to start at different intervals. So you're going to see something below the sigma. Actually, yeah, I think the problem I'm going to do is a J. So J is just going to represent, is going to be part of your row, but that's going to be the start. Where are you going to start? And I'm going to do a problem on your homework, so let me see which one this was. Yeah, we should write it down. So this is where you're going to start. This is where you're going to end. All right? So for sigma, you're going to be adding, because you're finding the sum. There is a start, and there is an end. And there also is going to be a rule. 1 minus j squared minus 3. That is what we call the rule. You guys should be familiar with the rule. That's what we've been trying to find for sequences, Maggie. That's not funny. You're right. Nothing's that funny. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. So this is what we've been practicing finding and also evaluating with them. All right? So does anybody have any questions on the basic notation of sigma? It's a lot to look at, but Justin, if you're writing it down and paying attention, you'll really understand that there's really, everything's kind of broken down. So it's really not as complicated as you have to make it be. Okay, Megan? Is this spells or two? Yes, we did go over this in algebra two. Okay. All right? So we'll talk about those. So what we're going to do now is just plug in our values into the formula, or into the rule. So I have 1 over 3 squared minus 3 plus 1 over 4 squared minus 3 plus 1 over 5 squared Whoa. minus 3. What? What? Whoa. Can you explain so, what happened to one and two? This is my rule. Yes. This is where I start. I start oh. when j equals three. Makes sense. I end when it equals five. Oh. Okay? So, so now let's go and simplify these. One over nine minus three is one sixth. One over uh, sixteen minus three is one thirteenth. One over twenty-five minus three is uh, one twenty-second. And obviously, to add these without a calculator, you would have to find the common denominator, right? But I am just going to default and use a calculator for this one. Because I don't want to do all that math, to be honest with you. So 1 plus 6 plus 1 plus 13 plus 1 plus 22. And the answer is 144. How does 1 6 plus 1? How much are you doing to this? 1 6. What? That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, you have to do 1. Hashtag 1 6 plus 1 third was 1 6 plus 1 third was 44. Hashtag 1 6 plus 1 third was 44. Logan logic. I forgot to put in the division. That would make sense. No, no, no. I think it's just a gym rack. That, yeah, you know, the range. <laughs> <laughs> At equals 124 over 429. You go 80. What do you do? Okay. Please leave it as a fraction. I do not care for decimals. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. All right, shut up. Joke's over. <laughs>